Hi, it's Cameron Reynolds, and maybe we can get this video done before this thunderstorm uh, heads on in this way. This was a colony that was a virgin swarm. If you want to watch the video where we put them into this box, you can watch it up here. There was at least two virgin queens that I spotted in that um, clump of bees, and we have given them plenty of time for the queen to come back. I fed them about two and a half gallons of syrup so they could start drawing foundation. This is just one of those things you have to realize as a new beekeeper is that nature doesn't always provide everything that you need and, and when it, it might provide it but it might not be the time when your bees need it. And what I'm, what I'm trying to get to is our nectar flow is pretty much non-existent at this point. There's just enough coming in to really not do hardly anything. The bees are robbing. If you leave a frame out around here with food on it, they're going to start robbing. We'll be doing some videos on that before too long. But we're feeding this colony. Let's get into it and see how they are doing. I also threw a speck of pollen patty in there the last time I was in here. But the main reason we're feeding them is not only to allow them to be able to survive through our about two months of dearth coming up, which means there will be like almost no nectar at all, but we need them to draw foundation out. And they need it as much as we would like them to have it. All right. So we have one comb that we gave them from another colony and then all of this right here they've had to do work on and you can still see there's some feed down in here they propolized this float up here and I don't always use floats but I especially use them on small colonies and new colonies I feel like it helps the bigger colonies that are really healthy seem to not really need them and you know, occasionally you see a drowned bee or two in there, but it's not because of the feeder necessarily. Um, bees just, they get old and they die. It's just the way that it is. There are definitely variables there. If you're wanting a feeder that is probably as safe as any of them, then an inverted half gallon quart jar, gallon jar would be the best. So you can see where they're starting to draw all the way out here on the eighth frame. And that's great. That's what we want to see. Time to do more bee work. <laughs> uh, what's that alarm for? All right, this is looking really good. So the bees need this sugar syrup to be able to make this found, you know, draw this foundation. And they're doing a fantastic job. Again, I've fed them two and a half gallons of about one to one. You know, it's not exactly one to one, probably a little bit thicker. And they're just drawing that out really well got a little bit on this side so we're gonna keep feeding we're gonna to have to keep feeding hard in order to sustain this momentum now there is a balance to it oh there's the queen right there you can overfeed we don't just constantly keep feed or feed in there got to make sure there's enough room for this queen to lay so there she is up there going about her business you can see some pollen thank goodness we still have some pollen coming in it's pretty much yellow and brown right now and uh, you know not a lot of it but it's a whole lot better than nothing there's eggs all down in here I get this question a lot about plastic foundation should I get yellow or black well I prefer the black really the only I mean they both work exactly the same except that you can see things down into the black foundation much much better and when I placed this big order on this foundation, I forgot to specify what I wanted and I ended up with 3,000 of the yellow. So, oh well, I can still see it, but we'll see how long that lasts. Be like my dad and start wearing glasses. I don't think my dad watches these videos, so I don't have to worry about the backlash. <laughs> my mom might tell him though. All right, so you can see some brood in here. They're starting to cap a little bit of it. You know, but all this is recently drawn. And, and especially when you catch swarms, I think it's a wise idea to put foundations in there. Swarms are already ready to draw f new combs. That they're programmed when they swarm like that. It is time to actively start setting up a new nest. Let's start drawing combs. So you can give them combs but why not just give them foundations and get yourself some brand new combs now this is one of the things i've heard a lot this year is hey i caught a swarm 
do you have a queen? Um, their queen, you know, is gone. There's no queen. Well, I've caught another virgin swarm this year, and the queen never came back. We had really bad weather during that time of the year, and she just didn't make it back from her mating flight. And we got a lot of calf brood over here. Look at that bee bread right there. And this is really nice. You got your sugar syrup. You've got your uh, bee bread, and then you have your brood. Now, once we get all of these combs drawn, you know, we'll uh, we'll continue to feed. But there's, I'm backing off a little bit on the feed, and right now because there's still feed down in there, they're filling up a lot of these cells in between. But what I'm going to do is probably not feed for five or six days, let them clear some of that nectar out of the center of these combs and allow the queen to be able to get in there and lay those up. Because we don't want to clog the brood nest um, too much. You know, there's, there's really not a high risk of them trying to swarm immediately, especially since they have a very young queen. Another thing that happens from time to time with swarms is you'll get one that has a mated queen that lays right off the bat she starts laying pretty good and you're like all right here we go and then they supersede her and she's just old and they they feel like they need to replace the queen and that can happen from time to time that's a lot of really good brood there so once we get this first round of brood turnover this colony is really going to take a step forward now even though we're seeing some pollen coming in here coming in here i know that we're fixing to go into a pollen dearth where we have very little pollen coming in. So I'm already starting to feed some pollen patties. I'm super excited to see that bee bread though. And that, uh, that pattern is really nice, especially for as much sugar syrup and bee bread as um, down into all this. And that is an old comb right there. That one's foundationless. Yeah, that one is. This, this is looking really good though. But on the other one, virgin swarm that I caught this year since the queen did not come back and if you know that it's a virgin swarm even if it's you don't know because you don't, you can't tell the difference or you weren't able to find the queen it's best to stick the swarm in there put them on foundation give them some feed come back around 20 days later and you should know if you have a good laying queen or not and if you don't then it's a you either have to have a queen almost you know very near in the future because the bees are getting very old or you can just combine them with another hive and you'll still have gotten some drawn combs out of the deal for me i have queen cells so i was able to drop a queen cell in and my queen came back and she's laying in there just fine that's another really nice frame of brood this hive is going to just do really wonderful once all that brood turns around more wonderful brood and the nice thing is, is this queen is this year, so she should uh, be in good shape the rest of the season. They have plenty of foodstuffs, and that's one of the reasons why they're able to go forward so well. This is something that maybe I don't talk about enough myself, is how much food is enough. And it really depends on the size of the bees and, you know, of course, how long your winters are and different things. But... For a colony that's this size, which if I condensed all these bees down, I'm probably going to go somewhere around six and a half, seven frames of bee coverage. You know, I'm, I want at least a solid deep frames worth of food. Now, it doesn't have to be on just one frame. You can have a little bit here, a little bit on the next frame over, but you want to at least have that much. You need to have plenty of foodstuffs. That's a nice bit of bee bread in there. I would really like to know where that brown pollen is coming from. We have a little bit of brood in the center. A lot of sugar syrup on the edge. They've drawn that frame very well. Let's see what the other side looks like. You know what? We've got nothing over here. Nothing at all. So what we're going to do is still stick that in there anyways the way that it is. Once we get a little bit more... Um, next time I'm probably in here and feeding, I'm going to take that frame and stick it next to one that they're partially drawing and, and do that. I could probably do that now, but I'm just going to leave it as it is. Right now, the, the most important thing is getting that brood emerged. Uh, they've, they've just about maxed themselves out. You know, they, 
a certain population can only do so much. We're feeding them. They're going to be able to draw a little bit more on these foundations. But we need to also realize that these bees are getting old. They were, kind, they were in their prime when they swarmed, a lot of them. Now, every day they're getting older and closer to their death. And that's why that next generation is so important. And once we start getting that next generation going, and that space is cleared up, the queen starts laying, you get more of a balance, which is so healthy for the colony. The, the hive is just chock full of pheromones. The queen produces multiple types of pheromones. The brood at different stages produces pheromones. Just so many different stages and ages that are really what make the glue, what keeps the hive together and keeps it healthy and strong. And that balance is so crucial. And that's again why if your swarm does not come back with the queen and you can't get one quickly, a lot of times it's better just to combine it because what will end up happening is they get too far out of balance. You end up with your laying worker, you get a laying worker situation, your worker bees start laying in your hive and then all of a sudden that nice beautiful comb that you just had is now being widened up into drone comb because they're desperately trying to fix this, an impossible situation and it's better to not let your comb get ruined like that. So I'm going to throw this back together right here. This swarm is looking great but sometimes swarms uh, don't work out either. Nature can be really cool and you know, thunderstorm like this come on out. That queen, if she had still been on her mating flight, goes out, um, gets blown off course a mile or two in some uh, strong winds, or gets you know pummeled by you know fast incoming rain, and you know she hits the ground, something eats her. I mean, there's just so many variables there. So nature is cool, but it also can be cruel. Maybe that should be a T-shirt. Awesome. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching this video, and good luck with your swarm catches this year.